Today we're going to focus on 5.4, which is factors and multiples. Let's take a look and do a little bit of refreshing on what a factor is and what a multiple is and how they're related. Okay, let's take a look at the number 6, and we're going to find some factors of the number 6, and then we're going to find some multiples of the number 6. Now, when we factor out a number, we have to think about what can we multiply together in order to get 6 as a product. So, we've talked about factoring a lot. We've talked about how we start with 1 and 6 as factors, or 1 and the number that we're talking about, and then we go down our list of numbers. So now we have to think, is 2 a factor of 6? Can I multiply anything times 2 to get me 6? Yes, I can, because 6 is even. 2 times what gets me 6? 2 times 3. And then, since we're doing 6, it's such a small number, we go all the way back. Those are the only four factors that we have for 6. So I'm going to write them in order, from least to greatest. 1, 2, 3. 3, and 6. Those are all of our factors. Now notice, all of our factors are smaller than our number or are our number. So there's 6. Everything else is smaller. That's an important thing to remember about our factors. They're always going to be smaller than our number or they're going to be our number. Now let's take a look at multiples. We talked about multiples a little bit before at the beginning of this chapter, but multiples are like skip counting for us. So if we were finding multiples of 6, and multiples can go on forever, our multiples are going to be our skip counting. So we're always going to start with that number, 6, and then we're going to count up by 6. So 6 times 1 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12, 6 times 3 is 18, 6 times 4, 24, 6 times 5, 30, 36, 42, 48, and so on and so forth. We could keep going, 54, let's go to 60. Okay, so these are multiples of 6. Notice how we're jumping by 6, so we're skip counting, or we're thinking about 6 times something, and that gives us a number. Those are our multiples. Now, notice how they're related, but how they're also different. Our multiples are always going to be either our number or greater than our number. Our factors are always going to be our number or less than our number. But they do have a common thread through them. So if we looked at the number 12, 6 is a factor of the number 12. 18, 6 is a factor of 18. 6 is a factor of 24. So all of these multiples have a common factor of 6. All right, now let's turn to page 207 in our textbook, and we're going to take a look at the Unlock the Problem. It says, toy animals are sold in sets of 3, 5, 10, and 12. Mason wants to, pick, to make a display with three animals in each row. Which set could he buy if he wants to display all the animals? The products of the two number is a multiple of each number. Factors and multiples are related. So if we take a look down here, it tells us again what we just talked about, that we have a factor and a factor, and then 12, which is our product in this case, is a multiple of 3 and a multiple of 4. Let's go back to our problem. What this problem is asking us is, we have Mason here, and Mason wants to put animals on a shelf. And there have to be three animals on a shelf. And he wants to use all of his animals. He doesn't want to have any animals left off on a row. He wants all of the rows to have three animals on them. Only three. And we have to use them all. So when we're looking at these rows, if we were drawing them, well here, this top part right here, that's just three animals if he were to buy three. And then he could buy six, or he could buy nine, or he could buy... 12, or 15, or 18, and notice in all of these rows, he has 3. Now think about, what are we doing in this case? We're counting by 3's, because he wants to use all the rows in sets and rows of 3. We're finding our multiples of 3. So with this question, we can think two different ways. So let's take a look at one of the ways that we can think about this problem. One of the ways we can think about this problem is think, is 3 a factor of that number that they give us? Is 3 a factor of 3? Well, yes, it is. 
we know that the number is always going to be a factor. Is 3 a factor of 5? Well, we'd have to find our factors of 5. We know that 1 times 5 gives us 5, and that's it. So 3 does not fall on this list here. So is 3 a factor? No, it is not. Is 3 a factor of 10? So we have to factor the number 10. Well, we have 1 and 10, 2 and 5. 3 is not a factor. So no. We could have also used our divisibility rule and taken the sum of our digits, so done 1 plus 1, or 0, sorry, and gotten 1, and we cannot divide this, so no, it is not a factor. Is 3 a factor of 12? Well, we have the number 12, and we have 1 and 12, we have 2 and 6, and we have 3 and 4. There's our 3 that we're looking for, so yes. If we wanted to find if 3 was a factor of 12, we could have also used our divisibility rule again, which tells us the sum of the digits must be divisible by 3. So 1 plus 2 is equal to 3, and yes, I can divide 3 divided by 3. So yes, 3 is a factor of 12. So the only two yeses that I have are 3 is a factor of 3 and 12. So that's one way that I could have done it. I could have looked at the numbers that they gave me, I have 3, 5, 10, and 12, and thought, is 3 a factor of these numbers? Now let's look at another way that we could have solved this problem. We could have found our multiples of 3. So, multiples are like our skip counting, so multiply and make a list. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and notice that dot, dot, dot means they keep going. If we looked back at our list, the only two multiples I see here that were above were the number 3 and the number 12. So 3 and 12 are multiples of 3. So Mason could buy sets of 3 and or 12 toy animals so that he had those rows. If he bought 3, that's what his rows would have looked like. If he bought 12... then he would have had four rows of three. There we go. Okay, turn your page to page 208, and let's take a look at this page. It says Tony works every three days, and Amanda works every five days. So Tony is going to be red, and he works every three days. And Amanda, she's going to be blue, and Amanda works every five days. If Tony works... June 3rd, and Amanda works June 5th, on what days in June will they work together? Circle the multiples of 3 and draw the boxes around the multiples of 5. So it gives me my instructions of what to do. So I'm going to follow my instructions. It says, circle the multiples of 3, starting at 3, because that's when Tony's starting. So Tony is starting on the 3rd of June, so 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, and 24, 27, and then I have 30, okay? So those are all the days that Tony works, and I'm going to put my boxes around every five days. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. Now, our question asked, on what days in June will they work together? Which just means, what is our common multiples? Now, when we found our common factors, we found all of the factors of both numbers, and then we figured out, well, what do they have in common? What do they have that's the same? We do the same thing with our common multiples. Now, with common multiples, they're going to go on for a long period of time unless they give us a certain time constraint like they did in this problem. So, what are our common multiples? Well, we're looking for the ones that have both a circle and a box. So, we have 15... That's one of our common multiples, and 30. That's another common multiple. So Tony and Amanda work together on June 15th, 
and June 30th. Now, when are we ever going to use common multiples? When we move on to our next chapters about fractions, we're going to have to start using our common multiples to figure out a common denominator. So that's when we're going to be using these multiples again. So these are important, and we are going to use them again in the future as our factors. Okay, so that was our example. We figured out, we followed our instructions, we drew boxes, we drew circles, and then we answered the question, on what day will they work together? And we identified that that was our common multiples of 3 and 5. All right. Look further down at the problem or on your page for the share and show. I want you to pause the video and take a minute and fill this out. All right, let's take a look at our page and um, each of these problems. So number one says multiply to list the next five multiples of four. So we're skip counting by four, four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, and twenty-four. Now, here's where it gets a little bit tricky and you have to think. It says, is the number a factor of six? Now we talked about a few pages back, now I'm going to go back to that page for you. Our factors, notice how these are smaller than our number, or the same as our number, and our multiples are larger. This is important when we're talking about these next problems. Our factors are going to be smaller, our multiples are going to be larger, or they can be that exact number. Okay, so is the number a factor of 6? Let's find our factors of 6. We have 6. Now we're going to factor it. So 1 and 6, 2 and 3. So our factors of 6 are 1, 2, 3, and 6. That's it. Those are all of our factors. Notice how they don't go above our number. Now, which of these are factors? Well, 3 is a factor, yes. 6, yes, that is a factor. That's the number. The number is always going to be a factor, and the number is always going to be a multiple. 16, no, it's larger than my 6, and my factors can't be larger than my number. 18, no, because it's larger again. Now, the next one says, is the number a multiple of 6? Our multiples, we're going to be skip counting. So let's take a look at our 6, and let's find some multiples. We have 6. Notice how I put the number first because that is a multiple. 12, 18, 24, 30. All right, now let's look to see if these are multiples. Is 3 a multiple? No, it is less than our number. And numbers that are less than the number that we're getting given are not multiples. 6, yes, that is the number, and the number is a multiple of that number. 16, no. 18, yes. Okay. All right, I want you to turn your page two times, and we're going to look at some of the word problems. I put the wrong page. I believe this is page 210. Okay. It says, what multiples of 4 are not factors of 48? And then it says, what factors of 48 are multiples of 4? So, we're going to be looking at factoring out 48 and finding our multiples of 4 and then comparing them. So let's do that first. We're going to start with some multiples of 4. So I'm going to put M and then 4. Let's find our multiples of 4. We have 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, and we should go all the way up to 48 because that's what we're looking at for our fact to factor. So we need to be at least up at 48. So 24, 28, 32, 36, 40, 44, and 48. All right, those are all of our multiples of 4. Now, let's find our factors of 48. I'm going to do it up here, 48. We have 1 and 48. 48 is an even number, so it's divisible by 2. 2 times what gives me 48? 24. 
In order to see if 48 is divisible by 3, I'm going to add my two numbers together. So 4 plus 8, I know that gets me 12. Is 12 divisible by 3? Yes, it is. So 3 is going to be a factor. My divisibility rule will help me with that. 3 times what gets me 48? 16. Is 4 a factor? Well, we see over here that, well, yeah, because it, four is uh, 48 is a multiple of 4, so 4 is going to be a factor. But we could also think about our divisibility rule, which tells us that if we double our 10, so 4 times 2 is 8, and then we add our 1s, we get 16. Is 16 divisible by 4? Yes, it is. So 4 is a factor. I have 4 and 12. Is 5 a factor? Well, our divisibility rule for 5 says if it ends in a 0 or a 5, then it's a factor. In this case, it does not, so 5 is not a factor. Is 6 a factor? Well, my divisibility rule tells me if 2 and 3 are both factors, then 6 is a factor. So 6 times what gets me 48? 6 times 8. Is 7 a factor? No, because 7 times 7 is 49. And then I go right back to 8, so I found all of my factors of 48. I'm done. Now I can go and look at um, my problem again. I'm going to put these factors in order from um, least to greatest. Unfortunately, I don't have room up here, so I'm going to put them down below in green so you can see them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, 16, 24, and 48. And when I put them in order from least to greatest, it just really helps me see what I'm looking at. So, question number 24 says, what multiples of 4 are not factors of 48? Are not factors of 48. Well, here are all my factors of 48. What multiples are not factors? So I'm going to go number by number. My multiples is 4 a factor? Yes. Is 8 a factor? Yes. Is 12 a factor? Yes. 16? Yes. 20? No, so I'm going to put that on the line. 24? Yes. 28? Nope. 32? No. 36? Nope. 40? Nope. 44? Nope. 48? Yes. So, what multiples of 4 are not factors of 48? Well, there's a list up to 48 anyways. Obviously, I could keep this going, and then everything after 48, that would be a multiple of 4, would be on that list, but... That would just be a little silly to keep going. All right. Number 25 is connected to this problem as well. It says, what factors of 48 are multiples of 4? What factors are multiples? So I have to look for my connection here. Is 1 a multiple? No. 2? No. 3? No. 4? Yes. 6? No. 8? Yes. 12, yes, 16, here, yes, 24, and 48, okay, so notice, when I'm finding my multiples, they're going to be numbers that are at least the number I'm starting with or greater. My multiples are my skip counting. And when I'm finding my factors, they're going to be smaller than my number or my number, but nothing's going to be greater. Okay, we got one more problem to take a look at. Let's take a look at number 27. Kai paid for ten to paid ten dollars for two charms. The price of each charm was a multiple of two dollars. What are the possible prices of the charms? Okay, let's break this problem down. He paid, or she paid, $10 for two charms. 
Now, nowhere here does it tell us that the charms cost the same amount. All it tells us is that we paid $10 for two of them. Each charm was a multiple of two. So we have to find our multiples of two. And then it says, what are the possible prices for the charms? All right, let's start with finding our multiples of two. We have two. Two, four, six, eight, ten. It doesn't make sense for me to go above ten because she's not going to pay more than ten dollars. So I can stop there. Now, what I have to do is think about, well, what two numbers that I listed for my multiples can I add together to get to ten? Because that's how much she paid. Okay, can I add two plus anything to get me ten? Well, 2 plus what gives me 10? 8. So 2 and 8, that would be one pair. Or, how about 4? Four? 4 plus what gives me 10? 6. So we could have done 4 and 6. So we already touched on 4, we touched on 6, we touched on 8. How about 10? 10 plus what gives you 10? 10 plus 0. And because she paid $10 for two of them, well, the charms aren't going to cost $0, so 10 is not an option. So there are my two options. She could have paid $2 and $8 for those charms, or $4 and $6 for those charms. Alrighty. We are all done with 5.4, We're talking about factors and multiples. The big takeaway from this lesson is all the way back to what we talked about the first slide. Factors are going to be smaller than or that same number, the number that we're given, and then multiples are going to be that larger piece or the number that we're starting with. So notice how they both have that 6 in common, but our factors are smaller, our multiples are larger. Alrighty.